Hello, you mesmerizing human. My name is Melissa and I'm an artist. Welcome back to my channel. And today is going to be a little bit different than usual. Usually I'm talking to you about the paintings and art and all, all that good juicy stuff. But today we are going to be doing a little bit of Q&A. So recently on my social media channels, I put up if you have any questions for me, to go ahead and put them and I will answer them in a video. So that is what we are doing here today. So if you have a warm toasty beverage, got some coffee, got some tea, go ahead and get it and I'm going to answer your questions. And we also got, let me show you, we got Maxi snoozing away. He earned it. He works hard. And I believe kitties hold on why can't I get adjusted here there we go kitties are sleeping in my bedroom and let's get started I don't have the questions in any particular order I just type them up as I saw them so here we go let's dive in and shameless plug the these stickers on here are on my site you should go look at them all right Let's get started. So question number one, have you always gravitated towards darker pictures or did that style gradually develop for you? So ever since I was a kid, I was drawn to darker things. And I remember one Christmas, I believe I was in middle school and on my Christmas list of things that I wanted, I had a few things. I had the Lincoln Park, Meteora CD, the Evanescence Tour DVD, and then it was an art book that it was like Nickelodeon characters, but from like early 90s shows. And I was really interested in the Ah uh, Real Monsters portion. So I've always been drawn to like the quote unquote weird things. And I, growing up, I was always carrying around a sketchbook. I always liked rock music. But when I started painting intentionally and for my business, that was back in 2019. So up until that point, I treated art as a hobby, even though it was my passion, what I really wanted to do. But it was back in 2019 that I started doing this on the daily and I said it we need to make our dreams come true because the life that I was living it was not working I I say that I never really found art it I needed it it I need to be an artist there's really no other option <laughs> for me um but going back to the question as far as being drawn to the darker things. So when I started painting intentionally to sell my work, I wanted to make darker things. And what I really wanted to make was like dark figurative art, which as you can see is the bulk of what I make now. I wanted to be like ethereal, spiritual looking figures with a darker component to them. But I put a limiting belief in my head that I couldn't draw figures. So what I started off doing was conceptual abstract art. And I tell you, it was not good abstract art. It, I just had fun with paint, but you know what? That's how I got started. And I know that question comes on later as far as a tip for a starting artist, but we'll We'll round up back to that. That's how I got my hands wet in this world. That's how I got started and I don't regret it for one second. And then as I continue to have fun with the paint, eventually I just accepted and embraced. I said, I'm going to start making the art that I want to make. And death of me, I'll put a little picture of it right up there, was the first darker piece that I made. Now it took a few pieces for me to find that like surreal figurative style that I really liked, but 
I love that this piece was such a pivotal point for me. So I know that was wordy. I'm a wordy person. I, I got the chatty Kathy syndrome. <laughs> Anywho, let's move on to the next question. I hope that helps. Question number two, which I'm glad this is the second question. Any tips that I have for people who are interested in painting? So I say, do it. Do not be afraid to start. And I know that for talking with other people, other artists, even the blank canvas can be really intimidating because you have that fear of not making it just right or that fear of judgment, but you really just gotta, once you start, physically start, the the inspiration will come and the, the flow will come out of you. And I've had people ask me before, well, what do you do if you don't have inspiration? Now, that hasn't really happened to me within the past three years, but what I have found is having a discipline and a scheduled studio time, even if I don't necessarily have a complete plan of what I'm going to make, if I, you know, sit in that chair in front of my easel and then I have the paintbrush in hand, keeping that discipline and keep showing up for myself every day, once you're there, it, it comes, it, it flows naturally. So you have to give yourself that space to create. So p tips for people who are interested in painting, do it, go ahead and start. And also don't be afraid to waste paint. I know that was a thing for me when I started that I was afraid to like play around with mixing colors at first. If you look at my work now, you can see I, I mix colors all the time. Um, my palette is a hot mess, but don't be afraid to waste paint. It, it takes time to figure out what brands that you like. And even if in regards to paint, exactly what medium it is, you know, do you want acrylics? Do you want oils? What kind of mediums do you want to use with them? Do you want to use watercolor? You know, gouache, the, you know, the list goes on and on. Just don't, worry about wasting paint. And I say wasting because it's all part of your process. You're, you're learning as you go. You learn by doing, so don't be afraid to waste paint. Question number three, what is your creative setup like? Do you like peace and quiet or music and background noise? So my studio, I share it with our laundry room and purposely I will not show you the other half <laughs> because I am really good about washing. It's once it's dry and clean. It's it's in a basket, but I mean it's it's not cute. It's not pretty. But it I love this space though. It has great natural light. We got um the door with the windows there and then we've got a huge set of windows over here. So I actually I really love this studio space. And I love that it's in my home because with having three little kids during the summer months it works out best for me to paint late at night after they're in bed and this gives me the freedom to be able to do that <clears throat> excuse me whereas during the school year you know i'm able to incorporate that my studio time throughout the day now what exactly do i listen to so typically while i paint I listen to podcasts because I found that it really helps to turn off that inner critic because my brain gets tuned into the story or what I'm learning. And what I usually listen to, Bailey Sarian's Dark Art History podcast is one of my main go-tos. That as well as the Dark Art Society ran by Chet Zar. He is an amazing dark artist. Like if you are interested, even if you're not necessarily interested in dark art, but if you're interested in like oil painting, uh, surreal art, anything in the art world, he is just listening to his podcast. He's a down to earth, very kind, very nice guy and extremely, extremely skilled. Um, 
So there's my plug for the Dark Heart Society podcast. And then I have also started listening to one of my friends that I met on Twitter, and you asked me this question too. Uh, she has a podcast called The Ghoulish Gallery, so I've been listening to that as well during my studio time. And I also enjoy listening to uh, Tony Robbins, and then also Levi Lesko is another one of my favorite people to listen to while I paint. And then as far as what the setup looks like, my dog, Max, who he just moved from here over to the laundry side, he is always in here with me. He, he is my best buddy. He is my, my soulmate in fur. <laughs> and then my two cats, I have Nala and Luna. They, they're usually prowling around here. Uh, Luna likes to sit up here on the table while I paint or she'll jump on my shoulders or they will both kind of walk over by the window and Nala will usually stick by like the feet of the easel or she might like go up on top of the washer or dryer. And yeah, I guess that's it for the setup. Let's move on to the next question. This question is also from my friend. How are you so cool? <laughs> I just, I love that. Thank you for that. So moving on to the next question. Has being an artist changed you in any way? And so to answer this question, I'm going to flip the narrative a little bit and kind of say that being an artist is in my blood and I don't really have much of a choice. I tried during, um, during nursing school. So I have a bachelor's of science as a nurse. I was able to take an art class each semester. So that really helped to keep my sanity and keep art as a part of my life. And, you know, growing up, I did like the advanced art classes and, and I, I was an art kid in high school, middle school, all that sorts of stuff. But then once I graduated college and started working as a nurse between that and, you know, we started our family, it, it got busy. And quite frankly, I went and good like three or four years without creating anything. And that's really when my mental health started to hit the fan. And it was then that like, I felt a void. I felt lost. Something was missing from my life. And then in 2019, when my mental health, you know, hit the fan, I finally had to seek treatment and go to therapy. And it was through there that talking with my therapist, she's like, you need to pick up your art tools again because it seems like that's a part of you that you've been missing and that you've let go and she was 100 percent right it was very healing um so being an artist is just a part of me i have to create i i just i have to next question what quote resonates with you so in regards to quotes this one i first heard it on the Princess Diaries. I don't know if you remember that movie, but I was a 90s kid and this movie was very popular <laughs> when it came out with Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. So the quote, this is where I first heard it, but then, you know, as a growing adult, I dived more into the deeper meaning of it. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And that is by Eleanor Roosevelt. And I think that especially in this day and age with the social media, it is so important to, to hang on to that. People's opinion of you and their words only have the value that you place on them. And I just, I think that is huge for protecting your peace, protecting your heart and protecting your mental health. And it's just, it's a beautiful quote and it has a lot of depth and a lot of meaning behind it. And I absolutely love it. And then last and final question. What is your favorite color? It's red. Red is my all time favorite color. And actually we joke that it runs in our family. So my paternal grandmother, um, her and my grandfather have passed. But her name was Shirley, and my grandpa's name was Stanley. And she absolutely loved the color red. Everything big of hers was red. Like, her, her coats were red. Her 
her vehicles were red. And there was actually a time that my, before I was born, my dad was still a youngin, so I wasn't even a thought at this point. But my grandfather had brought home a new car for my grandmother, but it wasn't red. <laughs> so she said, Stanley, you, we need to take that back and trade it in for, for a red one. And they did. So we kind of joke uh, in my family that, you know, the red gene continues on. And I've just, I've always been attracted to the color red. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's confident. It's feminine. It's fiery. It's spunky. I love the color red. Well, my friend, I hope that you enjoyed this q and A. I I always love sitting down and, and chatting with you. And I'll always feel free to ask me questions in the comments. I like to think that overall I, I'm a pretty open book. Anything you want to know, just go ahead and ask. Just, just keep it clean. <laughs> that, that's all I got to say. And thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's kind of cloudy, rainy, which honestly, I, I find this type of weather pretty calming and relaxing. I, I don't mind it one bit. And I hope that you have an amazing day. Much love.